Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. And, uh, you know, if you're like me, you've probably uh, pondered the question to yourself. I wonder if I could get by with only one drill. And if you're like me, the answer's going to be absolutely not. You know, what kind of maniac only has one drill? <laughs> No, but I, you, as you know, there's so many different options. You can ask five different people what they look for, and it's just going to be different things. But today's episode is going to be based on if you don't have a drill, or if you have a drill you might want to upgrade, or you just want to jump in the discussion on what kind of features you like or don't like in a drill, let's get to it because I think it'll be a fun episode. Now, for me, my journey starts right here. This is the first drill I ever used. This was my dad's drill. It was a uh, Fury. You could see this here. It was a 3 8 inch drill, 2.6 amps. And uh, boy, this was a nice little drill. I used this. I learned on this. I used this to restore my 51 Pontiac. I have many hours on this drill and... Still works like a top, like these always do. Always loved this drill. But when I turned uh, in the mid-70s, I turned 14 years old, I remember my dad uh, and my mom bought me a drill and a jigsaw kit from Black & Decker. And uh, that was my own drill, my first drill. It looked very much like this. I still have it. It's buried over there. It was uh, a 3H variable speed. And let me show you, these were very loud drills loud and uh they had let's see two amps but uh double insulated although this was metal up here but it was double insulated nice little drill and this is where it got me now started. one thing i was really proud of when i was a kid is i designed this myself i came up with this my idea now who knows it was somebody else thought of it before but i i know i thought of this my own and that was i needed a way to keep the chuck key i never liked when they were tied on with string or taped to the wire like so many drills, you know, they tape them to the wall. I, I always wanted something different. And I came up with this idea of a piece of vacuum tubing that I stretched over the key on one side. And then I stretched over an eye bolt on the other side. And then, you know, I opened up the eye bolt, put on the cord and closed it. This has been on for 20 years or whatever, and it just worked perfect. And I still think it was a great, great idea. Great design. Very easy to operate. So I was pretty proud of that when I was a kid. I came up with that when I was like 14 now, years old. Probably your first consideration when you're looking at it, you're going to say, do I want a cordless drill, a battery operated drill, or do I want a corded drill? Now, this is again, you know, there's going to be a lot of factors uh, affecting your decision. But let's go over the pros and cons of both types. The corded drill uh, here that has a cord to it, the biggest drawback obviously is the cord and the uh, lack of convenience. Other than that, it has more power, it's much cheaper, they last much longer, uh, they're more durable. I mean, there's a lot of reasons you would want it, but they got the damn cord, you know, which is always a pain. Now, as for the uh, cordless ones, yeah, they're expensive. Again, buy once, cry once. We're going to be spending a lot more money for a, a decent drill. And the batteries, that's a problem. Every, you know, you get five, six, seven years out of a battery. The new batteries cost as much as the drill did. So, you know, there's it's totally different. And there's arguments for one. But I just want to go over some features that I think you should consider when looking for a drill, regardless of what you want to get. So first, let's go, we'll start off real quick with the cordless type. Now, if you don't have a uh, battery-operated drill, probably the best way to look to get the biggest bang for your buck is to look for one of these packages. You know, these come around, especially on the holiday times, you always see these type of packages. This one here uh, came with a, a drill, an impact driver, two batteries, the charger, and a case, and you know, and they usually are a lot cheaper than they, even if you were to just buy one build, uh, drill separately because you know it comes all together. This is a lithium. Lithium is is a preferred battery uh, format over the nickel cadmium. Again, though, these can be expensive. They run you know maybe two hundred dollars for this set, so it's a lot of money if you're not even in that market. But let me, let's talk about some of the options you're going to want, even if you buy one of the cheap now, ones. Here are two battery drills that are really, it's unfair to compare the two because this one's 10 times more expensive than this one. You know, this one's a, a $16, $17 drill. And this one here, like I said, you know, it's, it's much, much more expensive. But 
you still want to look for the same features whether you look for an inexpensive one or an expensive one and that is uh this one here is nickel cadmium okay that's because it's it's cheaper uh the batteries are much bulkier you can see here much bulkier it's kind of an older format but i'll tell you I, i've had this thing for almost 10 years the thing runs great they're fantastic so if you've never had one before i always suggest buying for 15 dollars buy one of these first and see what you like and don't like about a battery drill you know because you know if you spend 200 dollars, you're in deep already you better like it but uh and then also when you buy a cheap drill like this to begin with you say what features do you like you know do i do i like a light in the front do i need a light in the front or do i want the uh uh, the clutch here, which basically comes on all drills now, and you'll get to learn like different features. They say, oh, that's a good thing to have, or I don't really use it that much. So I always say start with, especially when they're under $20, you can't lose by buying one of these, even if after a while you give it away. But these were great. You know, Harbor Freight has a great selection of these type drills. Now, when you move up to the obviously... The more expensive ones, you know, then you're, you're dealing like, you know, you can go in there and you say, well, this one's a hundred, but for 175, I can get one that's brushless. Do I want that or will I ever use it? These are much, you know, it's a heavier drill, but they're more commercial duty. They're much, uh, better made, uh, components in here. The chucks are better. It's more accurate and it runs longer because of the lithium. And the batteries are supposed to last long. One feature you'll find on this that you won't find on corded, most corded drills, is the clutch here. And what that does is that'll stop the drill and start to slip where you won't drive a screw in or uh, something too far. It's a great thing to have for woodworkers. Obviously, when it's on this little insignia here, that means it's drill. It gives you the most torque. But any, as you back this down here, it'll slip at different, uh, like I have it here at the lowest. And you could hear it slipping when I grab the uh, the clutch as I go on. And let me show you how that works in real now, life. Now, I do a lot of woodworking, and a lot of times you want to countersink or have your screw come flush to here. And that's where the clutch comes in really handy. Let's say I'm screwing here. I got it set on a low setting, and I'm going to screw it into this first hole. Okay? Let me... Now, you see that? I have that just sunk low, and it's slipping on here. Now, let's say you have a, an electric drill. I'm, I'm taking the clutch off, and we're going to put a, a screw in here. And let me show you what can happen. You can over-sync the screw into the hole, or, you know, a, whole, a lot of other things could happen. But let me show you here. Now, you see what happened? We went in way past where we wanted to. And you can see how that looks in comparison. See the difference? Now, if you wanted everything to come out, you could set it so it would just be flush. You could do whatever you want, deep. And all that is done with the clutch. And that's why it's a beautiful Another thing. Another outstanding feature to have on any drill, electric, battery, or anything, is reverse. Having a reverse feature, it, it's uh, you can't be without. Once you have it, you'll never be without. Next it. thing you want to consider is the capacity of the chuck. Now, different chucks on different drills will have different capacities. Uh, this one here is a quarter inch drill, a geared chuck. That's not a one that you could use without a key. And the rest of these here, usually all your drills today come with pretty much uh, non-key chucks. But there is a, a, a benefit to having a key chuck. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a half-inch capacity. Now, if you had something like this that you wanted to put in here, this will fit into this, this chuck, okay? Now, obviously, you couldn't put that in a quarter-inch or even the three-eighths-inch capacity. So, uh, also, the capacity, when you have a chuck capacity, it usually has to do with sometimes the power of the drill. And that's another thing you have to consider the amperage of a drill how much power if you're going to be driving deck screws and things like that you need a lot of power whereas if you're just going to be putting a screw in sheetrock or an occasional drilling a hole you don't need that kind of power what are you going to be using it for now also power is a consideration uh on the uh, drills the battery drills it usually goes by the voltage okay so these are both 18 volt drills but the lithium always has a little bit more kick to than the nickel cadmium but they're both 18 volt obviously 
a 20 volt will give you a longer performance and usually a little bit more power. Now, when you're dealing with the uh, corded drills, this drill here is about uh, just over two amps and this one here is four amps. They go up to seven amps, you know, so that all depends on, on how much torque and power you're going to have with the electric drill. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, this was the first drill I ever bought with my own money. This was, I, I guess, what, 30 years ago or something? I don't even know, but it's a, it's an older drill. But this this has been a fantastic drill. Had everything I want. It's compact. It's not heavy. It had uh, the only thing is it it only had a um, a three eighths inch capacity. You could see three eighths inch, but uh, it's variable speed. And it had reverse, you know, which is two things that you have to really have once you get used to drilling. So this thing has served me and done hundreds of projects. Really great drill. They still make the same design today. Uh, has a level on it and stuff, which, you, you believe it or not, comes in more handy than you think when you're trying to line something up. But I always like a keyed jaw. You know, I always liked a, a jaw with a key uh, or a geared chuck because uh, a lot of times I put in bits that are round bits that you know i want that extra grip on there uh the keyless chunks that they make today are very use very handy i mean they work very well they're very smooth they run true but sometimes if you're dealing with things especially round bits you know that don't have the three flats cut you know, in. when i speak of rounded shanks i mean a shank that's completely round on the back of your drill bit and this one here has three flats milled in and that matches up to the chuck jaws of the uh, of your chuck there's three jaws that will match on each one and it gives you much greater uh a much greater grip the problem is that they're a little bit tricky to line up. If you don't line them up exactly right, they could be off a little bit. And, you know, it takes you a couple seconds to learn how to use these. It, it does. It's not as quick as a, a round bit, but uh, you do have added holding power. And that's why they have that. Another thing is chuck quality. You know, uh, here you have a, <clears throat> you know, a plastic. I, again, I've never had a problem. I'm gentle on my tools. But if you're out there in the construction world and you drop this, you could crack your chuck and then it's gone. This one here has a little metal collar on the front of the mill. Milwaukee. I don't know if they still do that today, but uh, and this one here is all steel, and a lot of times they use like a Jacobs chuck. You can't beat these, but again, it takes a little bit longer. You need a chuck key, and that can get lost, you know. So there's pros and cons. Everybody has what they like, but I know if you're doing something like you're mixing Portland cement, or you you know using a mixer or something, you want something that's going to give a good grip on that, and not be constantly retightening your your Let's chunk. talk quickly about RPMs. What kind of RPM range do you want? Now, if you're going to be doing screw driving, you know, driving screws and deck work and things like that, you don't need a fast RPM. These usually, you know, they have two, this one has, has two settings, but they top out about a thousand RPM or 900 RPM for the, uh, the battery drills. Whereas the electric ones, they can go up in that. Now I have this one here as a specialty drill. This one here is a 600 RPM. Uh, whole gun, Black & Decker. This was actually more expensive. You can see here it says heavy duty, low speed. Okay, and uh, that had the uh, 600 RPM, had low RPMs because, uh, again, this would be made for drilling and things like that. But uh, with the variable speed, especially like today, here's a nice Milwaukee drill. And this one here is variable speed and it goes from zero to 2,500 RPM. Can you see that? And that's a beautiful uh, speed range. Uh, my Black & Decker, this beautiful uh, professional here, went from 0 to 2,500 also. That's a great speed range. And you say, well, why would you need the extra speed on a drill? Now, for most drilling that you're going to do, a slow speed is preferred. When I go in here, this is, a, this is 600 RPM. That is just perfect. And, and if I feel the tip of the bit, that is cool to the touch. That's just what you want. The problem Here I'm is I'm going to peg the drill at 2,500 RPM and we'll drill that same hole. Now it wasn't that much quicker, but I can definitely feel the tip of the drill is warm. Okay, actually it's hot here to the tip, but that will burn up and dull your bits. That's why remember if you find these old drill bits from the old drills from years ago that didn't have variable speed, they'd all burn up your bits. They would, you know, they dull them out because the heat dulls a bit super so That's fixed. why almost all modern drills today will have variable speed.
you can go in slow save your bits and uh, you could work all the way up to the top speed of 2500 rpm so now why are you saying would you need the high speed well the high speed comes in handy for so many accessories that we use the drill for for example these wire brushes that mount into the drill you could see here at a higher 2000 rpm they will do a much better job than if you put it into a slow speed drill. Also, you have the drum sander. It's like my buddy Abe Elias gave me this one here. This drum sander I have in a, a you know a variable speed, but it kicks up to 2,500 RPM. And you could see what a job that would do. Do a nice job. Now, some of the newer drills, the uh, especially some of the better, the higher quality drills, have a, a secondary speed, a low speed and a high speed that you can get by, like this Milwaukee, you can get by with using, let's say, a cup wire brush. It'll give you some speed. But again, not as much as the electric drill. So that's where the electric drill will shine. When I was a kid in scouts, one of my scout leaders, Mr. Wexler, had, oh, he, this guy was a real craftsman. He had such fantastic tools. I remember he had a Milwaukee hole shooter. This isn't a hole shooter, but this is a, a good heavy duty Milwaukee drill, but it was uh, the same type of drill, but his was like, you know, the hole shooter had the, you could see here, that's got a small, this is a quarter inch spindle. He had like the three eighths variable speed. I said, I want that drill. And I remember years later, I picked up one and look at this. I picked this up on eBay. It was mislabeled as a hammer drill and it's not a hammer drill. It was a Milwaukee Magnum hole shooter. Let me show you this cool thing. Now, I only recently got this, but it does have the twist off. Remember, I was telling you, you could twist off the uh, the cord here. You just twist it to the left, pull it out, and you could see you could, re, you know, take the cord off to transport it or whatever. It makes it really easy. But the one thing that, uh, I again, I just got this. You see the chuck is a little bit rusty. I want to show you how to address that because they come kind of shellac sometimes, and they always do get a little bit... It's very easy running over the wire brush, and I'll show you how you lubricate. Okay, we took it to the wire brush, and then there was still some embedded rust in here, and I used Ben Moll's, thank you, Ben, for this uh, fine conditioning belt, which took off any residual rust off of here off the chuck. So now you have it all clean. I vacuumed everything out. There's no dust or anything. It uh, looks beautiful. What, what I always like to do is I take a little bit of tri-flow, okay? Just a little bit, and you see where it spins here, where the collar spins around the top? I always just put a couple shots, it don't take much, just let it get in there and work it in and then just wipe it off and this really makes the chuck go back and then you could run the chuck back and forth a couple times and wipe it down but that really, because they do put like a shellac or something on the chucks but this drill is an absolute monster as far as torque goes and balance it's just a beautiful drill let me plug it in and show you now what it's this drill is made for extreme high torque applications it only goes from zero to 850 rpm it is a variable speed but see i run the chuck back and forth um here you can see i'm going to run it forward and when it closes up watch how much torque this has you can't even hold this i mean this will just tear out of your hand so same thing so run it back and forth a couple times once you lubricate it and then what I like to do, the last last thing I do, is I soak a Q-tip in isopropyl alcohol and just run it in here and clean the inside of the jaws with isopropyl alcohol to make sure, see, there's always a little residual lubricant or whatever in there to make sure, because that'll make sure to grip your, your bits and everything. There's always some kind of grease or oil inside there. You want to get rid of that, but you want it around the the, the collar. Okay, so in closing, you can see there's so many variables to consider, but if I had to pick a drill, the what I would look for personally, variable speed, very important. Reversible, very important. I would like a half inch chuck. Uh, that would be nice. I would also like um, a 2,500 RPM top speed, if not more, but you know, at least 2,000 RPM high speed. Uh, I would like a detachable cord. <laughs> These are things that, you know, once you try them out, it's really great. But uh, you see how it matters, how it, you know, it differs. But you get what you pay for. Remember that. So I hope this helped out. And if you can, put in the comments, what what do you think is an important thing for somebody that's new in, in looking for a drill? What would you look for if you were them? Would you go with the corded or the cordless? Would you go with the high speed? What would you like? Okay. So thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye. And you could see what a job that would do.